Hello, today we're talking about a congruence theorem for triangles called side angle side. We're going to have a whole bunch of different theorems that we're going to talk about over the next few days. This one's one of the easiest ones to remember, I think. Basically, if two sides and the included angle, so included means that it's right in between the two sides, of one triangle are congruent to two sides and the included angle of a second triangle, and those two triangles are actually congruent. So let's draw a quick little example of that. So let's write out two triangles that look the same, and we'll label them ABC. And the second one I'd like you to label it DEF. And what we're given, in this case we're going to say that we were given that side AB is the same as side DE. Angle A is congruent to angle D. And then side AC is congruent to side DF. Okay. And in that case, notice that we've got a side an angle and a side, and those are all congruent, which means that triangle, and make sure you write this in the order, in the same order, so the first one doesn't really matter, triangle ABC, but we want to match up congruent angles. So whichever one is congruent to angle A, which is angle D, oops, forgot to write the triangle symbol. So we've got triangle D, the one that matches up with B is E, and the one that matches up with C is F. So you want to make sure you write those in the same order. Okay, now these are going to be pretty quick. We're just going to see if there's enough information given to show that the triangles are congruent using the theorem that we just learned. And let's just draw a few points on here. Label a few points so that we can actually talk about these. Okay, so it looks like we're given that AC is congruent to DB. Then we have CB is congruent to BC. And that one we're not actually given, but we know that because of the reflexive property. And then, I guess we can put that on there really quick. It's like the same thing is congruent to the same thing. Those are actually the same side. And we could say that angle ACB is congruent to angle DBC, and that's because they're both right angles, and right angles are congruent. Okay, and now we can conclude by side angle side, because notice we've got a side, an included angle, and another side. By side angle side, triangle ABC is congruent to triangle DCB. And once again, make sure you're writing these in the right order. The first one doesn't matter, but the second one, make sure you're matching up the points that correspond with each other. And so it's very easy to accidentally say point B is the same as point B. So the point is the same, but that angle is actually not the same. Angle ABC is not the same as angle DBC. So you have to be really careful about that. Okay, let's look at the next one. We'll call this, once again, we're going to label this. So we're going to have A, B, C, D. And then we're going to say, looking at this, we're given that, well, actually, we're not given, but by the reflexive property again, we can say that AC is congruent to CA. And then we can say that BC is congruent. Oops, not very neat. Okay, BC is congruent to DC. And then we can say that, let's see, do we have an angle? There is an angle that's congruent, but I don't think it's the right one. So notice that this is not an included angle. We're actually, if, if we were at the included angle, it would be in this position right here. So we can say that angle BAC is congruent to angle DAC, but it's not the included angle. And so therefore there's not enough information. Enough info to show congruence. 
at least by the theorem that we're learning today. All right, next we're gonna look at a proof. Now in general, we, so we have talked about proofs already, but in general, I want you to think about what are you given? What are you trying to prove? Which theorems or properties can you use? And then what details are needed to use those theorems and properties? So kind of down that order, we're gonna kind of examine what we're given and what we need to find. Okay, so we're given that BC is congruent to DA. So let's see, BC is congruent to DA. This is already labeled. And then we're also given that BC is parallel to AD. So just notice that that's also labeled with the little arrows. And we're trying to prove that triangle ABC is congruent to triangle CDA. Okay, so let's think about our strategy here. We're trying to prove those two triangles are congruent. They look congruent by looking at it, but we need to have actual facts, right? Another thing to remember is that they share this side. Whenever triangles share a side, oftentimes that comes in handy because we know that those are actually congruent to each other. So we really just need another angle. And the angle we would want to have, so if these sides are congruent, so we've got this one and we've got this one, they're congruent, we really want that angle right there. And because they're parallel, I think we can find that using one of our theorems from the past. So the alternate interior angle theorem would tell us, just imagine that these, might extend this line just a little to help you imagine it. Just imagine that these parallel lines are going like that and this line was going through it. Remember we had that theorem in the past that said that this angle is congruent to this angle. Oh, not that angle, what am I doing? This angle right here, alternate interior. The other ones get a little messed up by the other side, but these are the ones that we need anyway. Okay, so we're gonna just put this into, and we probably don't wanna label them on this part since that's not what we were actually given. Okay, so first thing is, Something, some of our reasons are already filled in in some of our statements. So the first thing we want to do is just say what we're given, right? So we say, well, we know that BC is congruent to DA, and that was given to us. And sometimes it's helpful over here on the left to kind of say, okay, I've got one of my sides. And then we could say that BC is parallel to AD. And we know that because it was given to us. That doesn't actually give us our sides or our angle. So now we're going to write the next part. So by the alternate interior angle theorem, it sounds like next we're going to talk about angle BCA is congruent to angle DAC because of the theorem that we just talked about. And that gives us our angle. And our other thing that we're given, well, actually we weren't given it, but we know that AC is congruent to CA because of the reflexive property. <clears throat> Excuse me, and this gives us another side. Remember the reflexive property is basically something is equal, not equal, something is congruent to itself. And it comes in handy when we just have to point it out. Okay, and then we can say, yes. Our final statement is that by side angle side, we know that triangle ABC is congruent to triangle CDA. So the side angle side congruence theorem can be our official way of saying that. All right, that's it for today.